On the 21st of November 1963, Nike Apache, a sounding rocket supplied by NASA, blasted off from Tumba, a tiny fishing hamlet in Kerala. Scientists from the US, the USSR and France had come to India to witness this moment. The launch was successful and Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, the man behind this mission, sent a simple telegram home saying, gee whiz, wonderful rocket show. His words were light, but the weight they carried was immense. India, a developing country, had entered the space age. It was only a few years ago that the USSR had stunned the world by launching Sputnik 1, the first artificial Earth satellite in 1957. The US played catch-up and launched its first satellite, Explorer 1, in 1958. This space race between the Americans and the Soviets was a part of what would become famous as their Cold War rivalry. But far away from these geopolitical dynamics, India's space journey began in 1961 when Vikram Sarabhai sent a proposal to Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru to start a space program, one that would benefit the common people of India and hasten the country's progress by several years. He believed that India could use weather satellites to issue tsunami and flood warnings and satellite television for direct broadcast in villages so that children could be educated and villagers informed about farming, hygiene and family planning. Nehru, a champion of modern science, was completely on board and asked his close friend Dr. Homi Bhabha, who was the chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission, to review the proposal. Bhabha sent back a positive report and within a year, in 1962, the government set up the Indian National Committee for Space Research or INCOSPAR. Of course, Sarabhai was appointed as its chairman. One of the first tasks taken up by Inkospar was to establish a rocket launch pad station. For this, it was decided to send a bunch of young Indian engineers to NASA for training. Interestingly, this group included the future president of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. While the group of Indian scientists received coaching abroad, the team back in India started looking for a site to set up the station. The primary requirement was that the place had to be close to the magnetic equator of the Earth. A perfect location was found in a small seaside village called Thumba near Tiruvananthapuram. But the land was owned by the 16th century St. Mary Magdalene Church. Sarabhai reached out to the bishop with his plan for India's space program. Interestingly, the priest asked the Sunday congregation to vote on it, and the congregation, who were mostly fisher folk, readily agreed. Soon the church was transformed. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, who set up his office in the church, later wrote, The church housed the first office of the Tumba Space Center. The prayer room was my first laboratory. The bishop's room was my design and drawing room. This picture of the equipment for India's first rocket launch is iconic. Rocket parts were transported on bicycles as there were no roads here. On the 21st of November 1963, the stage was set for India's first rocket launch. At 6.25 pm, the Nike Apache rocket soared towards the skies and marked the dawn of India's space journey. The Nike Apache rocket was US made. But exactly four years later, on the 20th of November 1967, India launched its first indigenous sounding rocket, Rohini 75. Two years later, in 1969, Inkospar became the Indian Space Research Organization or ISRO. And the rest, as they say, is history. Today, ISRO is one of the most innovative and respected space research organizations 
in the world.